promise that Jesus makes. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. And all this I have spoken while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. So we come to the second in our Advent series about the gifts of Christmas, and it's the gift of peace today. The capture of Saddam Hussein just days before Christmas in 2003, I think a lot of us remember that. That brought renewed hope for peace in the world. But six years later, the president proposed an additional 30,000 troops be sent to Afghanistan in the hope of ending the war in the Middle East, which began following the terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001. But the kind of peace that men can broker will be on the world's terms. And the first of these terms is cost. Even months before Hussein's capture, then President Bush predicted the cost of the peace would approach $87 billion. But when the longest war in US history ended with the withdrawal of American troops in August of this year, the cost of the Middle East war for the American people topped $2 trillion. Peace in the world comes at a staggering economic cost but also at unquantifiable human cost. The death toll for US troops in the Afghan-Iraq war approached 7,000, along with almost 52,000 injured in combat, and countless others who have returned home with injuries. Some have taken their own lives. When we add to that the deaths of the foreign troops and civilians, along with those injured, the human cost rises dramatically. Peace in the world comes at a grave cost, that's true. The other truism about world peace is that it is temporary. Since the beginning of recorded history, the entire world has been at peace less than 8% of the time. Over 3,530 years of recorded history, only 286 of those years saw peace. 8,000 peace treaties were made and broken. You just have to look to our own country's example. As one observer put it, Washington has a large assortment of peace monuments. We build one after every war. Peace in the world comes at the cost of violence and money and human life, and it doesn't last. World peace is at best an absence of war or a lessening of conflict for a short time. And if we feel that Global conflict doesn't really affect us much. All we need to do is to refocus our, our, our eyes on our communities where children shoot one another in the streets of Boston or Lowell or Brockton. And you look a little closer and you see the ravages of conflict within our own families and even in our churches. And you come closer still. And we have only to look within our own souls to find a lack of peace. But the world was no different on the day Jesus was born. He came into a world of forced peace. The Pax Romana, anybody who's done world history has read about this. It was a peace that was bought by the Romans through bloodshed and enforced brutally when anyone dared to disrupt their peace. Judea, where Jesus was born, was ruled by the Jewish king Herod, who, when he thought his throne was in danger from a baby born in Bethlehem, ordered all the infant towns in that, all the infant boys in that town to be murdered. Even within the first few days of his infant life, there were those who wanted to kill Jesus. And it would be the threat that he posed to the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, that would ultimately cost Jesus his life. 
But this peace, too, would be temporary. In a few centuries after Jesus' death, Rome itself would die, and its peace with him. And yet this morning, Jim and Karen lit that candle that's celebrating the gift of peace. And when we see that candle, that small flame in the glow reminds us of the light of the world who was born on Christmas Day. Even as we prepare ourselves for another year of living in a peaceless world that we inhabit. Now Jesus, in his brief lifetime, saw what we see in the world. Jesus was fully man as well as fully God. He saw that there's no peace. But on that night before he died, and knowing full well he, full well he was going to his death, he called together his closest friends and he gave that promise. My peace I give to you. Think about it. How could he go to the cross and give this gift and, and have such peace within himself? He said, I do not give to you as the world gives. So the peace of Christ is not world peace. The peace of the world comes with force from an exterior state of human grace. But the peace of Christ comes from the acceptance of his gift of an interior state of divine grace. Now, just before Jesus promised this gift of peace, he also promised the power of the Holy Spirit. The peace of Christ comes to us from the living presence of the Spirit of God who breathes new life into us when we believe in Jesus. His eternal life that preceded even the creation of the world his virgin birth, his miraculous, powerful life, his sacrificial death on a cross, his triumph over death for all time, his rising back to heaven, where even now he is working on our behalf, and his gift of the presence of his Holy Spirit. The world's peace is costly and temporary. Christ's peace also was bought at a very high price. But whenever you accept his gift, Christ's peace is permanent for you. It is forever. Christ's peace grows in us as a fruit of his love for us. And so when we accept that we are loved by Almighty God, we are free to love God and each other. Because God is the source of peace. Christ is the giver of peace. The Holy Spirit is the channel of peace. And a quiet conscience, a restful mind, and a surrendered will, and loving fellowship with others, with a hopeful heart, are the nature of peace. That's the gift he wants to give to you. The absence of these is the absence of Christ's peace. Without the peace of Christ, we are restless. We are driven relentlessly onward towards some man-made goal. For some, it drives us toward human achievement and academic excellence, job advancement, higher salary levels, collecting the prizes of the good life, money, houses, cars, vacations, boats, whatever your heart desires that is not God. But for others, those who look closely at their lives, lack of peace and restlessness drives them to where they find peace. Perhaps St. Augustine said it best when he prayed to God, my restless heart finds no rest until it rests in you. Mm. A long ago, a man sought a perfect picture of peace, but he couldn't find it. And so he announced that he would pay a very high price for the perfect painting of peace, and his challenge stirred the imagination of artists everywhere. <clears throat> Paintings began to arrive from far and wide, and finally, the great day came when the perfect painting would be revealed and the fortune would be paid to the successful artist. Now, the rich man appointed knowledgeable connoisseurs of art as judges. And so they uncovered one peaceful scene after another while the viewers clapped and cheered. And tensions grew high when only two paintings remained veiled. As a judge pulled a cover from one, a hush fell over the crowd when they beheld the image of a mirror-smooth lake that reflected lacy white birches, 
under a soft blush of the evening sky. And along the grassy shore on the lake, a flock of sheep grazed undisturbed. Surely this was the winner. But the rich man, he didn't see his vision of peace. And so he stepped forward and uncovered the last painting hastily himself. And the crowd gasped in surprise. This can't be peace. A tumultuous waterfall cascaded down a rocky precipice. The crowd could almost hear the roar of the water and feel its cold, penetrating spray on their faces. Gray storm clouds threatened to explode with lightning and wind and rain. And in the midst of the thundering noises and the bitter chill, a spindly tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the waterfalls. One of its branches reached out in front of the torrential waters as if foolishly seeking to experience their power. But a little girl, a little bird, had built its nest in the elbow of that branch. Content and undisturbed in her precipitous surroundings, she rested on her eggs. Mm -hmm. With her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones, she was the perfect picture of peace. The peace that Jesus gives us is not the absence of trouble. It is the confidence of his presence with us forever in all surroundings, in all circumstances, no matter what. And this is why the peace of Christ surpasses all human understanding. We're not to try and make sense of Christ's peace. All we are to do is to accept it. The peace of Jesus is gazing at the stars in the sky with the knowledge that you know their creator. Mm. Closing your eyes in sleep without fear of tomorrow. A stillness in your heart when trouble swirls all around you and doesn't it just do that. A quiet mind in a raging world. Today, as we look on that small flame the candle of peace on the Advent wreath. Jesus holds out his hand to you and he says, I do not give to you as the world gives. My peace I give to you. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious and loving Father God, because of your tender mercy, you sent us from heaven the rising sun to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Isaiah foretold 700 years before your son's birth, he will be called Prince of Peace, whose peace will have no end. Your angels sang on the night of the birth of our Savior of your great mercy to us, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those upon whom his favor rests. On the night before his death, our Lord promised that his gift of peace to us would overcome even his death and abide with us forever. He encouraged us with this promise. He would never leave us alone. He would send his Holy Spirit to abide in us, to speak to us with our Savior's words. And if the Spirit governs our minds, then we will have life and peace. In his Spirit, Christ has brought us into your kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. Heavenly Father, your peace transcends all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, who has fulfilled every gift of Christmas and every promise by making peace through his blood shed for us on the cross. And we thank you and praise you for the costly riches of your gift of peace. Amen. Amen. God's great servant, Billy Graham, 